Remember your compassion, O Lord, and your merciful love, for they are from of old. Let not our enemies exult over us. Redeem us, O God of Israel, from all distress. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. <clears throat> Peace be with you. Welcome, brothers and sisters, to our celebration of the second Sunday of Lent. And during the course of the Mass, St. Paul reminds us that God our Father sent Jesus, his Son, into the world to benefit every single one of us. We're invited to listen to him and allow his words to change and transform our lives. So as we begin to celebrate this Mass, let's give thanks to God for such boundless loving kindness and ask for mercy and pardon for all the times we've not put our trust and our hope in him. Lord, you fulfill God's promises made through the law and the prophets. Lord, have mercy. You speak words of healing and wholeness. Christ, have mercy. You lay down your life so that we might live. Lord, have mercy. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins and bring us to everlasting life. <clears throat> Let us pray. O God, who have commanded us to listen to your beloved Son, be pleased, we pray, to nourish us inwardly by your word, that with spiritual sight made pure, we may rejoice to behold your glory. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God, for ever and ever. A reading from the book of Genesis. God put Abraham to the test. Abraham, Abraham, he called. Here I am, he replied. Take your son, God said, your only child, Isaac, whom you love, and go to the land of Moria. There you shall offer him as a burnt offering on a mountain I will point out to you. When they arrived at the place God had pointed out to him, Abraham built an altar there and arranged the wood. Then he stretched out his hand and seized the knife to kill his son. But the angel of the Lord called to him from heaven. Abraham, Abraham, he said. I am here, he replied. Do not raise your hand against the boy, the angel said. Do not harm him, for now I know you fear God. You have not refused me your son, your only son. Then looking up, Abraham saw a ram caught by its horns in a bush. Abraham took the ram and offer, offered it as a burnt offering in place of his son. The angel of the Lord called Abraham a second time from heaven. I swear by my own self, it is the Lord who speaks. Because you have done this, because you have not refused me, your son, your only son, I will shower blessings on you. I will make your descendants as many as the stars of heaven and the grains of sand on the seashore. Your descendants shall gain possession of the gates of their enemies. All the nations of the earth shall bless themselves by your descendants as a reward for your obedience. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. The response to the psalm is, I will walk in the presence of the Lord in the land of the living. I will walk in the presence of the Lord in the land of the living. I trusted even when I said, I am sorely afflicted. O oh, precious in the eyes of the Lord is the death of his faithful. I will walk in the presence of the Lord in the land of the living. Your servant, Lord, your servant am I. You have loosened my bonds. A thanksgiving sacrifice I make. I will call on the Lord's name. I will walk in the presence of the Lord in the land of the living. My vows to the Lord I will fulfill before all his people. 
in the courts of the house of the Lord, in your midst, O Jerusalem. I will walk in the presence of the Lord in the land of the living. A reading from the letter of St. Paul to the Romans. With God on our side, who can be against us? Since God did not spare his own son, but gave him up to benefit us all, we may be certain after such a gift that he will not refuse anything he can give. Could anyone accuse those that God has chosen? When God acquits, could anyone condemn? Could Christ Jesus? No, he not only died for us, he rose from the dead, and there at God's right hand he stands and pleads for us. The word of the Lord. Glory and praise to you, O Christ. From the bright cloud the Father's voice was heard. This is my Son, the Beloved. Listen to him. Glory and praise to you, O Christ. The Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Mark. Jesus took with him Peter and James and John and led them up a high mountain where they could be alone by themselves. There in their presence he was transfigured. His clothes became dazzlingly white, whiter than any earthly bleacher could make them. Elijah appeared to them with Moses and they were talking with Jesus. Then Peter spoke to Jesus. Rabbi, he said, it is wonderful for us to be here. So let us make three tents, one for you, one for Moses, and one for Elijah. He did not know what to say. They were so frightened. And a cloud came covering them in shadow. And there came a voice from the cloud. This is my son, the beloved. Listen to him. Then suddenly, when they looked round, they saw no one with them anymore, but only Jesus. And they came down the mountain. As they came down the mountain, he warned them to tell no one what they had seen until after the Son of Man had risen from the dead. They observed the warning faithfully, and though among themselves they discussed what rising from the dead could mean. The Gospel of the Lord. Jesus took with him Peter and James and John and led them up a high mountain where they could be alone by themselves. There in their presence he was transfigured. And Peter spoke to Jesus, Rabbi, he said, it is wonderful for us to be here. As they came down from the mountain, he warned them to tell no one what they had seen until after the Son of Man had risen from the dead. Today's Gospel, obviously, is the the account of the Transfiguration. And just for a, a few moments, the small chosen group of apostles caught a glimpse of Jesus' divine nature and were absorbed in complete adoration. And that was precisely why Jesus had taken up taken them up to the high mountain. And as usual, Peter speaks on behalf of all present and perhaps for us too. Rabbi, he said, it's wonderful for us to be here. He was so taken by the wonder and the glory of that moment, and he wanted it to last forever, never to have to move on. As they came down from the mountain, he warned them to tell no one what they had seen. Peter wanted to stay high up on the mountain, absorbed, and enjoying the heady experience. But Jesus was already moving them back down to the plane of daily life, where they lived, where they belonged. But the going up and the coming down were part of one experience. In order to face the future trauma of Christ's suffering and death, 
the apostles needed to witness a glimpse of his glory to maintain their, to maintain their hope in the mystery of his resurrection, which was about to be revealed to them. And the preface of our Mass today puts it far more succinctly and far more beautifully than I can say. But after he had told the disciples of his coming death on the holy mountain, he manifested to them his glory to show even by the testimony of the law and the prophets that the passion leads to the glory of the resurrection. They say that absence makes the heart grow fonder and in which case as a result of the three lockdowns so far I'm sure that our love and appreciation of the Eucharist has grown and I'm sure particularly for those who um, are at home that's very true. It's something that most of us have taken for granted most of the time. And to be deprived of the Eucharist and of being physically present at the celebration of Mass, or not to be present at the celebration of Mass, I should say, has been a terrible blow for many of us. When we were able to open the, the churches back in June last year for private prayer, it was a real joy to see people coming along and just enjoying being in the presence of our Eucharistic Lord. What a wonderful gift to be able to spend time in adoration before the mystery of God's love and abiding presence among us. Being before the Lord surely reminded us and brought home to us that we're part of one family of God. We're all brothers and sisters united in Christ. From time in prayer, many went to bring that love of Christ to others through simple but important ways, helping in food banks, supporting the sick and the vulnerable in our communities, phoning those who were in isolation to give them some comfort and encouragement, and in many, many more ways besides. These two activities, adoring the Lord in the Eucharist and reaching out to our brothers and sisters, are really part of the same reality, namely the mystery of Christ's lasting presence in the Eucharist under the form of bread and wine, and his presence in the mystical body, in his people on earth, in heaven and in purgatory. St. Augustine reminds us that when we say Amen to the body of Christ at Holy Communion, we're also saying Amen to the body of Christ present in our brothers and sisters who surround us. It's part of the same action. It's part of the same truth. Adoration and mission go together. You can't authentically have one without the other. St. Teresa of Calcutta says it much better. She says, the Mass is a spiritual food that sustains me, without which I could not get through one single day or hour in my life. In the Mass, we have Jesus under the appearance of bread, while in the slums, we see Christ and touch him in the broken bodies, in the abandoned children. As we move through Lent and Eastertide, it would be good to take with us some of our practices and penances, especially time spent in prayer before Jesus in the Blessed Sacrament and the living out of the corporal and spiritual works of mercy. Just as the disciples of Jesus were encouraged and strengthened when he was transfigured before them on the mountain, so the glimpse of Jesus' glory that we experience in the Holy Eucharist it encourages us today to look outward and to live out the gospel in our daily lives. Now let's stand and profess our faith together. I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, all things visible and invisible. I believe in one Lord, Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, born of the Father before all ages, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, 
consubstantial with the Father. Through him all things are made. For us men and for our salvation, he came down from heaven. And by the Holy Spirit was incarnate of the Virgin Mary and became man. For our sake he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried, and rose again on the third day in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is adored and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. I believe in one holy, Catholic and apostolic church. I confess one baptism for the forgiveness of sins, and I look forward to the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. After sending the gift of his Son, God our Father will not refuse anything he can give, St. Paul tells us. So let us bring our needs to the Lord. For the Church, for all who struggle to hear the voice of God and to believe in God, for those who struggle with conscience. For all people of faith, especially those who look to Abraham as their father in faith. For those who have died. And for our own private and personal intentions. Father, you ask us to listen to your son. May his words be the light to guide our steps this day and every day. We make this prayer through the same, Christ our Lord. Amen. Pray, brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. <clears throat> may this sacrifice, O Lord, we pray, cleanse us of our faults and sanctify your faithful in body and mind for the celebration of the Paschal festivities. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, almighty and eternal God, through Christ our Lord. For after he had told the disciples of his coming death, on the holy mountain he manifested to them his glory, to show even by the testimony of the law and the prophets that the passion leads to the glory of the resurrection. And so with the powers of heaven, we worship you constantly on earth, and before your majesty without end we acclaim, Holy, Holy, 
Holy Lord God of hosts, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. You are indeed holy, O Lord, and all you have created rightly gives you praise. For through your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, by the power and working of the Holy Spirit, you give life to all things and make them holy. And you never cease to gather a people to yourself, so that from the rising of the sun to its setting, a pure sacrifice may be offered to your name. Therefore, O Lord, we humbly implore you, by the same Spirit, graciously make holy these gifts we have brought to you for consecration, that they may become the body and blood of your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, at whose command we celebrate these mysteries. For on the night he was betrayed, he himself took bread, and giving you thanks, he said the blessing, broke the bread, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, and giving you thanks, he said the blessing, and gave the chalice to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. We proclaim your death, O Lord, and profess your resurrection until you come again. Therefore, O Lord, as we celebrate the memorial of the saving passion of your Son, his wondrous resurrection and ascension into heaven, and as we look forward to his second coming, we offer you in thanksgiving this holy and living sacrifice. Look, we pray, upon the oblation of your church, and recognizing the sacrificial victim by whose death you will to reconcile us to yourself, grant that we, who are nourished by the body and blood of your Son, and filled with his Holy Spirit, may become one body, one spirit in Christ. May he make of us an eternal offering to you, so that we may obtain an inheritance with your elect, especially with the most blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with blessed Joseph, her spouse, with your blessed apostles and glorious martyrs, and with all the saints on whose constant intercession in your presence we rely for unfailing help. May this sacrifice of our reconciliation, we pray, O Lord, advance the peace and salvation of all the world. Be pleased to confirm in faith and charity your pilgrim church on earth with your servant Francis, our Pope, me, your unworthy servant, the order of bishops, all the clergy, and the entire people you have gained for your own. Listen graciously to the prayers of this family whom you have summoned before you. In your compassion, O merciful Father, gather to yourself all your children scattered throughout the world. To our departed brothers and sisters, and to all who are pleasing to you at their passing from this life, give kind admittance to your kingdom. There we hope to enjoy forever the fullness of your glory, through Christ our Lord, through whom you bestow on the world all that is good. Through him and with him and in him, O God Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honour is yours for ever and ever. Amen. <clears throat> At the Saviour's command and formed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us, and lead us not into temptation. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Saviour, Jesus Christ. 
Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign for ever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. Amen. May this mingling of the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ bring eternal life to us who receive it. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. You take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Grant us peace. Lord Jesus Christ, Son of the living God, who by the will of the Father and the work of the Holy Spirit, through your death gave light to the world, free me by this, your most holy body and blood, for all my sins and every evil. Keep me always faithful to your commandments, and never let me be parted from. Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word, my son shall be. The body of Christ. The blood of Christ. Amen. This is my beloved Son, with whom I am well pleased. Listen to him. Especially for those at home, we make our spiritual communion together. My Jesus, I believe that you are present in the holy sacrament of the altar. I love you above all things, and I passionately desire to receive you into my soul. Since I cannot now receive you sacramentally, come spiritually into my soul, so that I may unite myself wholly to you, now and forever. Amen.
Let us pray. As we receive these glorious mysteries, we make thanksgiving to you, O Lord, for allowing us, while still on earth, to be partakers even now of the things of heaven. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. The, um, the European uh, Bishops' Conferences have asked all the, the nations of Europe, which includes us, uh, to remember to pray um, for those who have died during the course of the pandemic. And they've allocated each country a different day. And England and Wales were praying for all those who have died during the course of this last 12 months in the pandemic. Uh, we're going to pray, offer mass for the repose of their souls and for their relatives, comfort for their relatives and families and friends. So that's Tuesday of this week in every cathedral throughout the country. All the bishops of, of each diocese will be celebrating a mass. So I'll be celebrating mass here at 10 o'clock for that intention for all those who have died during the course of the pandemic and for comfort for their family and friends. The Lord be with you. Amen. Bless your faith, we pray, O Lord, with a blessing that endures forever and keep them faithful to the gospel of your only begotten Son so that they may, be all, so that they may always desire and at last attain that glory whose beauty he showed in his own body to the amazement of his apostles, through Christ our Lord. Amen. And may the blessing of Almighty God, the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit come down upon you and remain with you forever. Amen. Go in the peace of Christ.